Hello there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to look at this little Lenovo Chromebook S345. It's a nice little thing. Bought it 40 from eBay for £45, and it's showing no signs of life, and that's what it was advertised as. So uh, it's in nice condition. There's a few cracks on the bottom. The listing said it had been opened incorrectly, but I've got a Type-C charger in it. Uh, tried this side here, and... Uh, Type C port this side here, and nothing's happening when I press the power on button. I had a quick look online, and some people say that if you hold down this refresh button and the power button for 10 seconds and start it, it will work, or if you do escape that refresh and power, it will work. On this one, it's not doing anything. So, this is what I'm thinking let's take it apart, and first of all, let's disconnect the battery plug the battery back in, see if it comes to life. And if that doesn't work, maybe we could try unplugging that little clock battery, you know, that CMOS battery or whatever, and see if that comes to life. If not, let's do a bit of fault finding on the motherboard and see if we can see anything obvious. Let's see if we can get this working again. Let's get started. Right, first things first, let's plug in a little amp meter into it and see if it's drawing anything. Right, it's coming on. It's only coming on at five volts, and can you see it's not really drawing any amps? 0 0.04. Gonna turn it on see if that makes any difference no right I don't think we can uh, gain anything from there let's try it on this one over here and it's the same this side as well here we go well that comes out nice and easy oh we've got a load of glue and stuff so it's been glued so it definitely has been off, and we've got like rip on here. We've got like a rip on the battery. So yeah, I think a little bit of work has been uh, has been done on this. Right. Okay. Uh, now, what are we looking at? I can't see any little battery on this one. That cable doesn't look like it's in very nice though. It looks like it's in slightly crooked. So you never know. What would that cable be for? That would be for I presume the keyboard, but then. Is the on and off button in the keyboard? Yes, it is. And this, of course, is a separate one on here. And this one up here. Right, let's straighten this up here. All looks a bit... Doesn't look very nice in there. I'm just gonna undo the battery for the moment. Ugh. What is that? It's like... There's like wax on it. What's that about? I've seen that on a board before. Yeah, it's wax. Right. Bit of broken plastic there. Hmm. Everything looks to be a little bit uh, dodgy, but I mean, it looks like it was stuck like that at the manufacturer because that's where the sticky bit is here. I'm just really unclear. What, I'm, I'm sure all this horrible uh, wax has come from. It doesn't smell foul. It's like it hasn't been bent in the proper places. Right, that's in there nice now. Let's try plugging it in without the battery and see what it does. No, so it's still the same. Let's see if it turns on. No. Nope. That must be for the touchpad. This is going to be for a speaker. Oh, both speakers are linked. This speaker is linked to this one, which then comes up here. We have four wires. This is for the screen. Right, we're free. Okay, let's get rid of this. 
Right, let's have a little look here, see if we can see anything obvious. So, what's that resting against? Oh, it's just a, a thermal pad on here, and you can see the way the heat's come around. Can you see the, uh, there you go. See that big shading around here? So, uh, yeah, it's using the backing of the keyboard there to disperse the heat. Now, for those of you that want to play along at home, I've slowed this bit down because this is one of the only parts of the video where you get to see the whole board here. So right now, I haven't seen what uh, the the problem is. I will discover that in in, in a minute or so. But uh, hopefully, by this slowed down, but you might have discovered what the problem is, or have you? Maybe there's something else as well that I didn't discover, but I do discover later. I already know some of you will definitely see it straight away, but. Uh, I didn't. So I'll leave it at that. You'll find out more throughout the rest of the video. Enjoy. Right, so this is the little LED here, isn't it? Yeah, there's a little LED just there. So that should light up. Ah, here we go. Look at this here, we've got an explosion. Oh, it looks pretty nasty. Well, good news is at least we can see it. So that side there all looks okay. But this is the problem here. Let's zoom right in and see if we can make out what's going on. Well, I suppose before I do any scraping, luckily we've still got what the chip is called. I don't think it's going to be fixable because I think it's all these pads are going to be completely gone. But we won't know until we get the IPA on it. Uh, I wonder is that some sort of water damage or whether it just exploded. I'm just going to take a picture of that. But we're going to be using some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. So we can safely clean the board with this. First of all, I'm just going to do a little bit of scraping. It must be liquid of some description, surely. It's amazing how a little bit of IPA just makes it all look so clean. Ooh, pins are coming back. I was expecting to see a hole in the board. See, this is why it's nice where something hasn't been tampered with, because if, if this was cleaned and, you know, still not fixed, then I wouldn't have known that this here was faulty. Right, so I think those pins there have completely blown away. So I presume this chip is something to do with power, and maybe it's driving these two MOSFETs here. Well, you can see those pins here are not reappearing. So let's get some flux on and let's take off this chip and see if we can get the pins to reappear and see maybe the, the, the pins on the chip might be completely burnt away. So let's get some flux. Right, I've got my temperature set to 500 degrees Celsius and 120 out for possible 200 airflow. There we go. Yeah, you can see it's all burnt there. Right, while I've got the heat here, I'm just going to uh, take off, I'm going to move these capacitors and also take off this MOSFET because there was a lot of corrosion around there as well. I'm keeping them in order so I'll put them back in the same spot. Right, 
Right, I'm going to give it a good scrub round here now. And I want to see if I can get those pads clean again. You know, there's a chance that that chip hasn't blown. It might be just that it was a no connect. Because you can see that the legs wouldn't have been making contact here. Because the corrosion's burnt underneath it. Alright, let's see what's going on here. Is that a broken trace through the middle there, or just corrosion? Likewise with that one and that one. Let's give it a good scrape. Right, let's see if we have continuity there, because I can't actually see if the pad's burnt through or whether it's just dirty. So if we go here and here. Ooh, right, if we go here and here. Yeah, we got it. Loses it. No, that's burnt through. Look, got it here, but not here. So that's burnt through. Likewise with this one, we got it to here, but I'm not sure whether it would have made contact because there's nothing there. How about this one? So that goes to here. Yeah, we're okay there. So it's this one. There's nothing on that one there. Right now, so we have to do a little bit of repair work here. But first of all, let's have a look at the chip and see if the chip itself can be cleaned up. Are these pins going to reappear or have they just been burnt off completely? Ooh, is it coming back? Yay, there's something there, still there. I can hear it all crunchy. I'm just gonna add a little bit of flux to that. And try to put some solder on it. Just trying to try to rub the ball of solder on top. Right, well the pads are definitely not as strong as the other ones, but there is a little bit of solder there, and there wasn't before, it was just, uh, it was completely burnt over. I think it will make a connect, although it wouldn't be as good as a, a connection on the new chip, because you can see these three up here are much smaller than the other ones. I think it'll be okay though. Well, let's try to fix up the board itself. Right, I'm gonna get my grinding pen. Okay, so I've uh, ground it back there. Now let's add a tiny little bit of flux to it. Let's add a little bit of solder and then we're gonna have to try to remake those little pads. Ideally, I could do with knocking that little bit of solder off here. There we go, right, so you can see all those are missing now. So we're gonna to have to do a line here, a line here, and a line here. Obviously that's a lot easier said than done. Let me have a look at the side of the chip, 
see if there's any way we can solder onto the side. Possibly, but it'd be very, very hard. Right, I am going to try to use some little copper tracks, like sticky tracks, and I'm going to see if there's any of them small enough that can go here, here, and here, and I might be able to just solder the very tips onto here. Right, so I've got these here. I remember seeing these about, I think it was on Northridge Fix, but I couldn't swear that. Maybe I was told about it, maybe somebody's seen it on Northridge and then they told me about it. But the idea is that there are loads of little traces. But I've never, uh, I've I think I tried to use it once, but they were too small. I mean, these all look, I need a pad, you see, these are more, I think these are all going to be too small again, unless I use something up here. Let's zoom in and see what I can do. Right, so the circles are going to be too big. They're all so similar, aren't they? I want a kind of fat pad. I think maybe, maybe the end of these, would the end of these be? Yeah, the end of those might be perfect. Are they all the same size? Yeah, okay, let's see if I can take off one of them. I'm just going to go to take my gloves off. Got these off eBay. They weren't very expensive. I think they had to come from China, but I'm sure there's UK sellers selling them now. Now, <laughs> is this going to work? I think I might have to do this through a microscope. These are tiny. As you can imagine, it's painfully small. Let's just see if I can tack that on here. hoping there was going to be enough solder on there that I could just uh, bury it in there. No, nah, it's not sticking. Right, let's get a bit of flux. And I'm putting some solder on the tip of my iron. Right, okay, uh, that is actually in the right place and it is soldered on here, so let's get rid of the tail. I 
And you know what? That is not too bad. So once that's in place there, the problem is it's going to be trying to get the next one on there. Right. When the next one goes on, it will probably knock that one off. But that is actually pretty nice. So let's just do a quick continuity test. See if it's made a contact. So the leg of the chip is going to be going onto here. Yay, look at that. Excellent, and it hasn't shorted there. Right, so I've got to do that one and that one. I'm going to do those under the microscope. Right, I can't tell you how hard this is purely because of the size of it. It is tiny. To put it into perspective, that big lot of pads you see there, the whole chip would easily fit with room to spare on your little fingernail. So if you look at your little fingernail now, you can under understand now why it's so hard. So I'm using just one prong of some sharp tweezers and look how big they look. And also I'm using uh, a little needle nose prong from Multimeter, again, a very small item. Yet on here they look like I'm kind of using pickaxes. So uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not easy, but anyway, it's, it's going quite well. Uh, I'm just gonna give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive while I'm fast forwarding through this repair here. The massive this month are kitsdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke C and Tony Dean. So many thanks to all of you guys and everybody that supports these videos, whether that's via the comments, watching the odd advert, and all the other Patreons as well. So basically what I'm now doing is, I'm adding UV solder mask onto it because you see, as soon as I add a little bit of solder onto these pads, they're just gonna rip straight off. They're just gonna stick to the soldering iron and come straight off the board because the bit that I've soldered, the little leg that I've soldered, is just gonna melt straight away. So I'm having to put UV mask around the place and all the way around them to try to encase them. The hard thing is I've gotta keep it very, very flat because if these rise up or if the solder mask gets too high, then the pads are gonna be too low. Again, they're not gonna to connect to the chip. We're talking about having to deal with tolerances within, I don't know, a millimetre or a fraction of a millimetre. So uh, it's not easy to do. So I'm having to put a solder mask on, but I'm having to keep it very, very flat. Then I'm having to try to tin up the pads by just touching them a tiny amount. Because again, too much heat, they're going to lift straight off even with the UV mask and stick to my solder line. Anyway, that went quite well. And now I'm just placing the chip back on you can see it dancing around the place and hopefully it will surface tension will put it into the correct position once i get the chip on i'm also going to put the mosfet on and the capacitors as well of course the capacitors like to fly around the place so i lose a couple of them but i they then reappear elsewhere on the board so i put them back into place the capacitors are quite damaged so they're a little bit harder to get back on but still they are going back on so all in all, that was quite successful. So let's get back to normal speed. So I think looking here, it can't have been a chip failure because the chip would have just blown up. Definitely some sort of corrosion has managed to sit on the board here. Kind of strange how it got right away into here. It's sat here while it's been powered because you can see that this, this here must be the powered rail because you can see they're all missing from, I was saying that that's missing that side. Oh, saying that, it depends which way I put them back on because it doesn't matter with these capacitors. Let's just see which side is the actual ground. So this is ground here. Now, is it this side? No, this is this side. So what you'll see is the shiny side will be the uh, the ground one. So originally this would have been that way round and uh, the dull side will be the power. So you know now that power has been applied to this while the corrosion is on the board. Hence the reason we've got all these dull paths here. Anyway, it's back on. Let's plug it in and see what it, uh, see what it does. You never know, there's a possibility that it uh, might have just failed from being disconnected rather than you know, like a disconnect underneath that chip rather than failing. Right, okay, let's see now. Are you gonna do anything different? Plugging it in now. Come on, do something more than five volts. Well, that's annoying. Have I just wasted my time completely? Is anything even coming over to this chip here? Oh. .2 
0.3 of a volt. Uh, right, so we've got 5 volts up here. Now, do you remember early on I mentioned about spotting something on the circuit board? Well, quite a few of you probably spotted the corrosion, just like I did, but who spotted the other thing that I'm about to show you right now? Anonymous Repair, I bet you were one of the ones that spotted this early on. You ready? Let's go. I've just noticed something weird here. Something weird going on up here. Hold on. What's going on here? Oh, hold on a minute. Ha ha. Wait a minute. What on earth's going on there? Has work been done here already? U13. What's that about? What? This is a... Uh, how did I miss that? I thought it was just an empty thing. This is a, a BGA and somebody has ripped it up and they've taken all the pads with it. Oh well. <laughs> Game over. That's annoying. Brilliant. Well, I never stood a fighting chance from the beginning, did I? All of these have been ripped up completely. What a shame. I only seen that because it felt rough when my hands went across there. Yeah, okay. Right, so this is my board here with the lovely missing chip and all the BGA balls ripped up. And you can buy it from AliExpress for £126. And if you have a look, sure enough, it's got a nice chip there. So uh, yeah, that, do you know what that is? I bet you that's going to be the controller hub. And so that's going to be the RAM. That's going to be the main CPU, the main processor. Uh, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. That's probably going to be the platform controller hub, or you know, like the Super I/O, whatever you call it. And I bet you that handles with the gate voltages down here to turn these MOSFETs on and off. And uh, that isn't that. It's not getting a signal from here because obviously there's nothing here. I did go on here, and if you have a look, can you see it says ELAC1 LAH1. 41P and that's the same as this one here ELAC1 LAH141P Right, so next day now and I had two options I could leave it as a failure video or I could buy a replacement board I managed to find one here for £39 which is cheaper than AliExpress which is great obviously it's used but that doesn't bother me as long as it works so I think it would be worth spending a £39 to try and get something functional that can be used by someone somewhere I'm not going to bother filming the putting in of this board but I will film it when I go to turn it on and then you will get the real reaction of whether the screen comes to life or not or whether the screen is going to be all smashed so it's going to probably take about a week to arrive but uh, for you it's only going to be a few seconds okay nearly a week has gone past and my board has arrived what I can immediately notice is that my board didn't have any of this on this was on the actual battery so yeah that's that little mystery solved. What I want to know is, what happens if we plug this into here? What reading do we get when nothing else is connected? Oh, and there's the, the lovely chip where it should be. And that was the one I was working on there. Now let's see, do we get any reading on it? Yeah, 15, oh no, five volts. No, 15, there you go. You see 15 volts. Yeah, okay, well at least we know now, in future, if we ever come across this again, that this board will draw 15 volts. Well, that was nice and easy to change over. So, now, let's see is anything going to happen. Plug it in. We've got a little flashing light here. No, not a flashing light, a steady light, that's good. Come on now. Oh, yes, 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 screen's okay, excellent. Brilliant, right, so uh, I don't think there's any foul play or anything going on. Oh, look at this. It was quite nice. Get started. Right. That's working. Is click working? Yes. I've tried to put my password in and uh, keyboard's not working. Looks like none of it's working. Oh, here we go. I've got one thing. Okay, that's working.
Isn't that weird? Out of all the buttons, only one's working. The at symbol. How bizarre. Oh, hold on, one more. And a plus. Hmm. That says to me that the ribbon cable is actually connected, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to take it apart again and see if I can uh, reseat that ribbon cable. But yeah, I think... Uh, I think I've got a bit of a dog. Well, the ribbon cable's certainly seated absolutely fine. You can see the line there, it's right the way in. There's nothing wrong with that. I know it's not sitting very nice, but that's because it hasn't been twisted very nice on the way up into it. Right, I'm just gonna fast forward through this bit now and do a voice out because to be honest, I don't wanna waste your time on it. At this moment in time, I'm thinking it could possibly be a driver issue, which is why maybe the keyboard's not working. So I connect up an external keyboard into it just to see whether it needs to do some sort of update. All of that doesn't make a difference whatsoever, so it must be a physical problem with the keyboard. So unfortunately, it's not repairable, meaning that to get access to it, it's all been plastic welded in. There's no little screws to undo to release the keyboard from it. The keyboard is part of the case because it's all been plastic welded down. So basically, I have to knock off every single weld just to get to it. This is more now just to prove what the fault was rather than actually, you know, well, I'm still gonna try and fix it, but we need to prove what the fault is first of all. So what I'm doing is stripping it all down and breaking every single plastic one. And then I'm just gonna show you in real time part of the actual initial stripping down of it. Let's do that now. Right, here we go. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Oh, what? What is this stuff? Why is it still so wet after all this time? Do you know what it's like? It's, it's, I tell you what it reminds me of. Some kind of like white lithium grease. You know, I'd use a WD-40 stuff, but white lithium grease version on the car. This is what it reminds me of. So you might actually be able to just buy a keyboard like that, you know? Maybe. How bizarre is that? I've never seen anything like that before. And remember at the beginning of the video as well, I said it was like weird wax on it, like a wet wax. Well, uh, yeah, I've convinced myself now somebody sprayed lithium grease on this, maybe thinking it's WD-40 and it was going to displace the water of something that got spilt on here, but uh, they've put white lithium grease on it instead. That's what I think anyway. Anyway, uh, long story is that uh, this keyboard is a, a nightmare to take apart. Some keys pop off a keyboard nice and easy. This was not one of them. And it's not just that, the whole makeup of it, you can't strip the membranes apart from each other until you remove every single key and it's very destructive. But anyway, look, this said, this keyboard's had it. I just want to know why it's not working. Can I see water damage on it? Or is it something else that's actually caused the non-function and functioning of this keyboard? So uh, yeah, I have to just keep stripping it down and stripping it down and stripping it down until I can get to the membranes. Then when I get to the membranes, I finally work out what the problem is. This, oh, here we go. Ah, there we are now. Let's see if we can find any breaks in it. Right now, how does that join up to, oh, is it just that tiny little bit there that joins here? Maybe the fault's there then. Do you know what I mean? Because all of these are gonna go back, aren't they? To, so say we've got loads here, going up around, around. Yeah, I think they all join onto that one little bit there. 
Can you see it's just slightly different there than the rest, this little bit here. So, if we were to get the multimeter, we're not going to get a reading between here and here, but we should get a reading between here and here on these little bits, because they are uh, they're exposed. So if I was to go here and here, you can see we're not getting any ohm reading at all. But if I was to go here and here, we should do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, okay. Right. So that's that. So I wonder, do they stop making a contact with these bits on here? Because I can't see anything obviously wrong with it. I think that maybe it was just so wet here that it wasn't given any... Uh, the contacts weren't making contact with each other. That's what I think. Right, so I hope it makes sense. Basically, every single track here is like a kind of conductive paint track. And they're all completely sealed apart from the bits that need to be exposed for example like you know where the button presses down on each of the contacts but to join the whole front membrane to the whole back membrane they all go up to that little connector that i just showed you the one i've tested with my multimeter and there's probably about 10 little strips there of exposed conductive paint and that needs to also touch the 10 strips on the back membrane with the exposed conductive paint but because some person decided it was a good idea to spray white lithium grease everywhere or some sort of weird stuff the conductive paint isn't touching each other because there's a huge wet barrier in between two of them so in hindsight now if i'd known all this maybe we could have done this without being so destructive it's just that I was thinking it was water damage that caused it. Obviously, hindsight's a great thing, and if I had known that, then I could rewind time and I could just clean up those contacts there, possibly without taking everything apart. And then, uh, yeah, I'm sure this keyboard would have worked just fine. But anyway, look, it's apart now. What can I do? So I'm just going to put it back together and connect it up to the computer again, just to see if the button presses work. Because remember, before we only had about two buttons that worked. Let's see now if we have more buttons working by physically pinching the two membranes together where it meets on those little conductive paint little strips five six but there's still lots of them that are not working one so two's no two is working hmm well it has given me hope i mean we've definitely proved what the fault was whether every one of them is going to work or not i don't know Right, okay, I think it's worth the risk of uh, putting it back together. You can see now that it is definitely typing when we're hitting uh, when we're hitting buttons here. Yeah, you can see they're moving along. So yeah, that's the problem. It, it, it had failed here. Right, okay, leave it with me. That's it. I'm just going to struggle putting it back together. Um, I've already had, uh, there's, there's, I'm running out of storage on my camera. This video's been going on forever and a day. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to mess around, try to get this back together. If I'm successful, great. If I'm not, I'm uh, leaving it. But at least I've proved what the fault was. Somebody had sprayed something ridiculous on the board, separated out the front membrane from the back membrane, and it couldn't make a contact with each other. So that's why the keyboard wasn't working. It's still a mystery what was wrong with the original board. But uh, yeah, I'll do my best to get it back together and have a working laptop at the end of it. Da, 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 da. Three hours have gone by. Some of you might wonder, oh, uh-oh, why has he got these? Because it's a complete and utter nightmare. I uh, went so far and then uh, there's too many clips that are broken. So yes, I could buy numerous different plastic scissor bits for the keys or I can look into another keyboard. The problem is you don't just buy the keyboard, you have to buy this whole assembly here. I can buy it for over £100. Somebody said in the 40 one for £30, but how many of the keys are 40? I don't really know. So it's a failure video. It's so irritating because I put so much work into this one, but it does actually work. It's just uh, you can't, well, to get the keyboard to work, you have to put pressure on that little thing I told you earlier. So for example, if I hold it there and go to YouTube, you will see it does work. So we prove what the fault is. I mean, it's not a failure. Does that work? Oh, there you go, yeah. Uh, it's not, it's a failure video, meaning the item at the end didn't work. Uh, is it repairable? Yes, by buying a new assembly for it. Is it worth it? No, because I can buy a working one for less than the price they want for a new assembly here. So it's just really, really not worth it. But saying that, 
it is what it is. You know, this one for me has been a complete failure because, uh, well, not really. I mean, I got the board for it. I was expecting it to work after that. But uh, yeah, it, it didn't. It's one of those things. Obviously, it's still got some value. You could attach an uh, external keyboard to it and use it. But the thing is, it's a laptop. You want it working as a laptop. So no, as far as I'm concerned, this is just junk, but it can be used to fix up another one that I might look at in the future. Or one of these will come up eventually you know this isn't very old at the moment was it 2019 i think it said so give it another year or two these will get, be getting broken left right and center and then i'm sure i'll be able to buy this assembly here for 20 or 30 pound i'm pretty confident of that and when i do the laptop then will be working fine so uh, yeah that is it a real shame i don't know the backstory of this one here but something's very confusing gone on somewhere along the line did you enjoy the video I really don't know. Maybe you would have liked me seeing the repairing those little traces there. I thought underneath the chip, I thought that was quite interesting. So uh, yeah, a big massive waste of time for me, but that is the way it goes sometimes. <sighs> Next time I will be more successful. If you enjoyed the video, give it a massive thumbs up and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks so much for watching. That you're distant There's something about you that's different I see it in your eyes Something isn't right Tell me again what I'm missing Cause you're afraid